this mountain right here, Mount Sinai, and found amazing things there and elsewhere. But the discoveries have not stopped. Saudi Arabia is renowned for its rich culture, historical significance, and abundant oil reserves. So for anybody that does not know, the real Mount Sinai is in Saudi Arabia. As the birthplace of Islam and home to the holiest cities of Mecca and Medina, it holds a special place in the hearts of Muslims. But what most people don't know is that Saudi Arabia also holds a connection to Christianity, a revelation that's sending shockwaves through the atheist community. Join us as we explore this newfound connection and the reasons behind the deep concerns it has raised. The connection we're talking about is Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is the sacred mountain where God revealed himself to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. Jews, Christians, and Muslims revere this mountain as a holy place where God communicated his will and guidance to his chosen prophet. Mount Sinai inspires reverence, gratitude, and devotion in the three religions. Even though this mountain is so important and revered in all three Abrahamic faiths, its location remains a mystery. By mystery, we mean there are different opinions about the location. Over the years, there have been many theories, but the debate lately has been divided between two schools of thought. Some stick to the more popular notion that it's in Egypt. Some are going with recent research saying that it's in Saudi Arabia. Recently, researchers have found interesting things that are changing our ideas about where Mount Sinai could be. These discoveries led them to an old place called Midian in Saudi Arabia. People there call a certain mountain the Mountain of Moses. This mountain is called Jabal al-Laws. This Jabal al-Laws, which Ron Wyatt, an American researcher, thought might be the real Mount Sinai. He also said he found other essential things in the Bible. Wyatt's idea came from reading Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 in the Bible. He thought that since Moses looked after sheep in Midian, the mountain he saw must be in Midian too. After finding where the Red Sea crossing might have happened, he thought Mount Sinai could be in western Saudi Arabia like Jabal al-Laws. Wyatt and his sons faced difficulties during their research in Saudi Arabia. Still, they left a trail for others to follow. Since then, more researchers have gone there and found interesting things. One of the things Wyatt thought he found was a bunch of rocks with carvings of cows. He thought this might be where Israel made offerings to God. There's also evidence of water flowing down the mountainside like a stream. This matches what the Bible says about water coming from a rock. However, Wyatt's thoughts weren't widely accepted due to his unusual methods and lack of formal archaeology training. Amidst all this, the Arabian Peninsula has interesting proof that matches what the Bible says. A mountain called Jabal Makla, near Nueba Beach, looks like it was burnt by fire or the sun. Under the water nearby, scientists found paths that seemed like they used to be land, which fits with the story of the waters parting for Moses and his group. After the Exodus, when the Israelites crossed and the Egyptians chased them, the water covered the Egyptians and their chariots. Dr. Leonard Moeller, a scientist from Sweden, noticed shapes that look like chariots in that area, even though the metal and wood have disappeared over time. Walking from the beach towards a possible Mount Sinai spot, a big rock, split in two, shows marks from the desert. This rock stands out in the desert. Some people think this could be the rock God told Moses to hit, and then water flowed out to help the Israelites. There's also a place like an altar nearby similar to the one Moses made from rough stones at the bottom of Mount Sinai. There is another interesting thing close by, a graveyard. Some think this could be where the people who worshipped the golden calf were punished. You will also find carvings on rocks, showing people worshipping bulls and cows. These pictures are only in this area, not all over the mountain. This makes us think that maybe this is where the people did those things. He didn't write official papers about his discoveries. He talked about them informally. This made many people doubt his ideas, including regular authorities and religious leaders. He even got arrested and was accused of being a spy for Israel. Now let's talk about why this mountain is so important to Jews, Christians, and Muslims. For Christians, Mount Sinai is also where God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. Still, they also see it as a foreshadowing of the new covenant that God established through Jesus Christ. Christians believe that Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses and brought a new law of love and grace. They also see Mount Sinai as a symbol of God's presence and power 
as well as his holiness and justice. In Christian stories, God showed his glory to Moses on Mount Sinai and allowed him to see his back, but not his face. God also called Moses to intercede for the Israelites when they sinned against him by worshiping a golden calf. On Mount Sinai, he also gave Moses the blueprint for his tabernacle, where he would live among them. Mount Sinai was a special place where Moses met God face to face while leading the Israelites out of slavery. Jesus also taught his followers on this mountain how to live by the spirit of the law, not just by words. He wanted them to act like they had seen God and he lived in them. The Bible also connects Mount Sinai with Jesus changing his appearance before Moses and Elijah. For Jews, Mount Sinai is where God made a covenant with the Israelites after he freed them from slavery in Egypt. God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai and gave him the tablets of the Torah, which make up the holy scriptures of Judaism. These rules and commandments serve as a code of conduct and reflect God's will for his people. Also, the mountain represents an encounter between humanity and divinity, showing the connection between God and his people and highlighting the theme of obedience and the importance of living according to his commands. In Jewish stories, God praised Moses for his faithfulness and leadership and instructed him to deliver his message to the Pharaoh and his people. According to Jewish tradition, Mount Sinai is also where Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac, showing his faith and obedience to God. Jews believe they're God's chosen people and that God made a covenant with them at Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is also known as Jabal Musa or the mountain of Moses for Muslims. It's one of the places where God spoke to Moses and gave him the tablets of the Torah which make up part of the holy scriptures of Islam. These rules and commandments serve as a code of conduct and reflect God's will for his people. Also, the mountain represents an encounter between humanity and divinity, showing the connection between God and his people and highlighting the theme of obedience and the importance of living according to his commands. In Islamic stories, God praised Moses for his patience and obedience and instructed him to deliver his message to the Pharaoh and his people. Now that we know how important Mount Sinai is to the three Abrahamic religions, let's talk about its location. The question of where the sacred mountain of God, also known as Horeb or Mount Sinai, is located, has been debated for a long time. Over the years, we've lost the exact memory of its true place. There are complex and controversial reasons for this fading knowledge. A long time ago, Emperor Constantine ruled the Roman Empire and embraced Christianity. His mother, Queen Helena, influenced by different beliefs and cultures, built monuments at places mentioned in the Bible. One of these places was believed to be where the burning bush and Mount Sinai were located. Even though Queen Helena never visited the spot, she claimed it was in the Egyptian peninsula. This belief was accepted for many years and became the traditional Mount Sinai on the Sinai Peninsula. However, as time passed, it became clear that this traditional location didn't match the descriptions in the Bible. This confused scholars who tried to find evidence in the archaeological record. The lack of proof for the traditional site even made some doubt the story of the Exodus. Translations and traditions caused misunderstandings, leading us away from the true story. We gradually forgot the amazing things during the Exodus, and the historical facts turned into stories with hidden meanings. Over the years, People have believed Mount Sinai is in Egypt, in the south-central part of the Sinai Peninsula. This is the traditional view that has existed since ancient times. There's a mountain called Jabal Musa, which means the Mountain of Moses in Arabic. It has a monastery at its base called St. Catherine's Monastery, one of the world's oldest and most revered Christian monasteries. It also has features that match the descriptions in the Bible, such as a blackened top, an altar, a cave, and a split rock. The Sinai Peninsula is located between the borders of Egypt and Israel. The granite peak, believed to be Mount Sinai, stands at 7,497 feet above sea level in Egypt's southwestern corner. This mountain has captivated pilgrims, scholars, and believers for centuries. In the pages of history, the earliest recorded footsteps leading to this majestic peak date back to the 4th century AD. Marked by Eusebius of Caesarea's visit, the 4th century wanderer Egeria also left her footprint during her 381 to 384 AD pilgrimage. As the Messianic era dawned, believers, researchers, and pilgrims seeking enlightenment were drawn to the sacred ground. So we won't be surprised if even Paul the Apostle has visited here. The Sinai Peninsula also holds ancient architectural wonders. The revered St. Catherine's Monastery, a beacon of Greek Orthodox heritage, 
rests in its shadow, and also strengthens the argument that it is the real location of Mount Sinai. The iconic monastery of St. Catherine was founded in 530 AD. Under the stewardship of the Orthodox Church of Mount Sinai, this monastery stands as a testament to the faith and resilience of the ages, as it's the world's oldest continuously inhabited Christian monastery. Its library has a treasure trove of ancient manuscripts and age-long wisdom. It once held the 4th century Greek codex, Sinaiticus of the Bible, within its walls before it went to the British Museum. All these might seem very interesting, but there's even more to this monastery than ancient texts. At the heart of this sacred haven lies the Chapel of the Burning Bush, a place believed to be the spot where God spoke to Moses through the burning bush that was not consumed. As history winds its course, the monastery also had its fair share of change that came with it. At one point, the Fatimid Caliphate transformed a chapel into a mosque during their reign, only to see it evolve back into a Christian sanctuary during the era of the Mamluk Sultanate. At another time, the Ottoman Empire's stewardship led to a period of desolation for the mosque, only to witness its reawakening in the 20th century. Over time, the quest for the authentic Mount Sinai has sparked many theories and debates. One voice that rang out amidst the chatter was that of Charles T. Baker. In 1873, he stirred the pond with a provocative idea that Mount Sinai was in fact a volcano. With the publication of his pamphlet titled, Mount Sinai, a Volcano, he based his theory on the biblical descriptions of the Theophany and Mount Sinai, which he interpreted as volcanic phenomena such as fire, smoke, thunder, lightning, and earthquake. He also claimed to have identified the location of Mount Sinai as Jabal al-Madba, a mountain in Petra, Jordan, with a natural rock altar on its summit. Baker's theory was published in his book, The True Mount Sinai of Moses. Still, it was not widely accepted by scholars or religious authorities. Moving on from that theory, the spotlight shifts to Professor Emmanuel Anadi's intriguing perspective on the true location of Mount Sinai. He believes that Mount Karkom, nestled in the southwestern Negev along the Israeli-Egyptian border, is where the biblical Mount Sinai is located. Professor Anadi, a well-respected Italian-Israeli archaeologist, has spent 30 years exploring Mount Karkom. He thinks it might be the real Mount Sinai. He found around 1350 old sites and a huge collection of 42,000 rock paintings on the mountain. These pictures show interesting things, like a temple made of 12 rough stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. There are also images of tablets, a menorah, and even a snake with a wooden club. Mount Karkom has a special feeling that has attracted people for a long time. Still, something unusual was discovered a few years ago. It's hard to describe. Still, it's like a bright light from a crack in the rock, making the rock formations look orange and yellow. This magical moment happens at noon on December 21st, the shortest day of the year. Remember the story of Moses and the burning bush in Exodus 3, verses 1 to 2? It's like that story when we see this glowing event. Moses was taking care of the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the sheep to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire but was not being burned up. Going to Mount Karkom isn't your average trip. Most archaeological sites and rock paintings are hard to find without a guide who knows the area well. Even though the old things left behind from the past, like the Stone Age and Bronze Age, may not look grand, they tell a story about how people lived a long time ago. However, this theory is also controversial and disputed by many experts. Let us now explore the possibility of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. Getting to the bottom of Mount Sinai takes us on a super interesting journey. People used to call it both Sinai and Horeb, like two nicknames for the same mountain. Some experts think they might be in the same place, while others say they're two close buddies. And just to add a bit more mystery, some folks say Mount Sinai might be a special spot within a bigger area known as Horeb. It's like trying to solve a puzzle with a few missing pieces. There's this famous historian named Josephus who lived long ago, and he said Mount Sinai was the tallest one around, hanging out near a place called Madian. Maybe the whole group of mountains was called Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb back then, so how do we know which mountain is the real Mount Sinai? Well, it needs to have a few things. First, there should be a big crack in the rocks near the tip top. This is where Moses had a special meeting with God and got those important Ten Commandments. And don't forget about the comfy area partway on the slope, and it's gotta have enough space. 
Think about two to three million Israelites and all their animals camping out. They need much room to hang out and set up their homes. Water is super important too. The mountain should show signs of water coming down, as the Bible says in Deuteronomy 9. And let's not forget the big field where the Israelites battled the Amalekites right before they reached the mountain. A split rock might be nearby, confirming the story of Moses hitting a rock to get water for everyone in Exodus 17. People who know about history say that the city of Midian and the mountain are close. Saudi Arabia's al Bad could be the place where Midian used to be. And look out for drawings and ancient writings too. They could show that people communicated back then. There should also be evidence of an altar or a place where this golden thing was worshipped. And for an extra twist, there might be a big spot where people who worshipped the calf were buried. Last but not least, let's talk about fire. Some experts think there was a big fiery thing at the very top of Mount Sinai, just like in the story of Exodus. Our theory of where Mount Sinai is located takes us to Saudi Arabia, where most of this requirement points to. The Bible hints about this special place pointing to the Gulf of Aqaba in the Red Sea, which is close to Saudi Arabia. However, there is some Bible connection with Mount Sinai, as deduced from the words of the Apostle Paul. He talks about Mount Sinai being in Arabia in a verse from Galatians chapter 4, verse 25. Now we need to ask a few questions to get what this means. Where was Arabia when the Apostle Paul was talking? What did people back in the first century AD understand as Arabia? And what did Apostle Paul himself mean by the term Arabia? It's interesting to know that during Apostle Paul's time, Arabia covered more than what we call Saudi Arabia today. It also included the Sinai Peninsula. So, when he says Mount Sinai is in Arabia, it fits with both the locations of Mount Sinai, Jabal Sin Bashar and Jabal Musa, because they were both in ancient Arabia. Apostle Paul didn't have a map like we do now when he talked about this. He had a first century map showing Arabia, including the Arabian Peninsula, the Sinai Peninsula, and part of Egypt. It's amazing that what we see as Saudi Arabia's desert used to be green and full of life. Historical writings from people like Herodotus, Josephus, and Eusebius describe this place as having mountains, valleys, rivers, forests, and spices. They even had trade routes because there was so much to share. Like ancient plant and animal remains, fossils tell us more about the past. They show us that Saudi Arabia had a wet and green climate long ago. There were even fossils of seahorses, which usually live in shallow waters. All of this reminds us that Saudi Arabia has had different kinds of plants and animals throughout its history. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. What do you think the real location of Mount Sinai is? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, ensure to like, share, and subscribe for more.